Hi guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella. Today I'm coming at you with a tutorial for these really cute crochet daffodils. I got a bunch of different colors here. <laughs> I got permission from the designer who is missnissdesigns.weebly.com and it'll be linked below. I messaged her and asked her if I could make a video tutorial of her wonderful flower pattern and she said I could. She also mentioned that anyone who makes this pattern to feel free to head over to her Ravelry page which I will also link below and share your photos with her so that she can maybe feature some of them under the uh, project for this pattern. So let's get into it. To make this pattern you will need two colors of worsted weight yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver Pumpkin and Bright yellow. There are a bunch of different varieties of daffodils so you can pick out different shades of yellow and orange and white to make your daffodils with. You also need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, an H 5.0 millimeter hook and an F 3.75 millimeter hook. To start you will be starting with the middle part of the flower which is this orange part here. You will need the F crochet hook and whichever color yarn you want your middle of your flower to be. Make a slip knot and attach it to your hook. Chain four. Slip stitch into the first chain to make a circle. You could also start with a magic loop, which isn't what I would normally do, magic circle, magic ring, but since this is written on the pattern, I'll do it this way. Now you want to chain two, This chain two counts as your first half double crochet. So now you're going to work 11 more half double crochet into the ring. Alright, so now you have 11 half double crochet and your chain 2 that counts as a half double crochet. So all together you have 12 stitches. For the end of this round you're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain 2. Row 3, chain 1, and you're going to single crochet in each stitch around in the back loop only. So when you have a the V shape of your stitch. This is the front loop and this is the back loop. You want to go into the back loop only with a single crochet and that will leave a stitch sticking out on the front and that's going to help turn it to make a bowl shape instead of it being flat. So you work all the way around. It will be 12 single crochets all together. Alright, so now you can see that it is starting to point upward. Little bowl shape. <laughs> so you have 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you want to slip stitch into that first stitch to finish off round 3. Round 4 and 5, you're going to repeat round three. So you're going to be single crocheting in the back loop only of each stitch around. So at the end of round four and five you'll have 12 single crochets.
Okay, now we're on to round six. This is the last round for the little middle part. I'm going to stop real quick and weave in my little tail. I like to weave it in at this point just to keep it out of my way for the rest of the pattern. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I can uh, finish up this little inside part of the flower. <laughs> so for round six, you're going to chain two and single crochet in the same stitch as your slip stitch. So the, the stitch that your chain two is coming out of, single crochet into that. And then you're going to be repeating this all the way around. You're going to be chaining two and single crocheting in the next stitch and then you chain two and single crochet into the next stitch. And you do that all the way around. At the end of the round, chain two and slip stitch into this spot right here where the original, the very first chain two came out of. And you pull up, trim your yarn, and you don't have to leave a tail. Go ahead and weave it in because the, the petal part of the flower will be crocheted onto the top part. Okay, so the first part of your flower is done. This last row made it really, um, I don't know, scallopy and cute on the top, make it look leafy kind of. The part that you want facing out is the part with the ridges from the leftover front loops because the first row of front loops is where you're going to be attaching your petals. So now, get your petal color and your H crochet hook. Okay, for the petals, you're going to be using your petal color, which I'm using bright yellow and your H, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. Start with a slip knot and stick it on your hook, like that. <laughs> okay, let's start the petals. For this part, you're going to be attaching to the first row of leftover front loop. Right here, you can see the ridge. And what you want to do is you want the opening of the flower pointing towards your body so that your petals will be facing the right direction. So you just grab, it doesn't matter which one of these you attach to, there's 12 of them, so just grab one of them. Stick your hook in there, and you want to attach it with a single crochet. So you just make a single crochet like you would in any other stitch. Like that. You can take care of this tail now, or you can weave it in later. I'll do it later. Now to start this row, you're going to chain two. You're going to skip one of these loops right here and single crochet into the next one. And that leaves a space there. You're going to want that space. So then you chain two again, skip the next one, 
and single crochet into the next one. Chain two, skip one loop, single crochet into the next one. Chain two, skip one loop, single crochet into the next one. Chain two, skip one loop, single crochet into the next one. And then the last one, you're going to chain two, and then you're going to single crochet into the very first loop where the original single crochet is. So there will be two single crochets there. But that's fine. You should end up with six of these little chain two spaces. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then to finish off that, you're going to want to slip stitch into the first single crochet. And that's your first row of the petals. Now for the second row of the petals, you're going to want to slip stitch into the first chain two space right here. Chain two. And this is where you do a bigger stitch. <laughs> so you're going to do one triple crochet, which is where you wrap around twice. It's just a little bit bigger than a double crochet. And then you're going to do three double triple crochets, which is where you wrap around whoop, three times. <laughs> and there's one, two, three, four. All right, so now we got to do two more of those. So now you have your chain two, your triple, and one, two, three double triples. And then you're going to make another triple crochet. Chain two, single crochet. All of that's worked into that first chain two space. Now you're going to slip stitch over here into the next chain two space. That's the first part of your first petal. This is the first round of petal and then there will be one more round and we'll be all done. So now you're going to repeat the same process in the rest of the five chain two spaces. So we're already into this next one with the slip stitch so you're going to want to chain two then make one triple crochet And then three double triple crochets, which is where you wrap around three times. So there's one, two, and three. Make another triple crochet. Chain two, single crochet at the bottom here in this chain two space, and then slip stitch in the next chain two space. So there's two beginnings of petals. Now you're going to continue that and do that four more times all the way around.
All right, so there's the five beginning parts of the petal. Let me kind of smoosh it out a little. <laughs> See, they're really rounded. They almost look like daisy petals. <laughs> but what we're going for is the pointy petals like a daffodil has. So there's one more round and you'll be all done. So now we're going to go straight into round four. You don't have to slip stitch anywhere because round four goes straight into the chain two space right here. Okay, so to start round four, you do two single crochets into this chain two space that you made on the first petal. You can place a stitch marker there if you'd like, but it's going to be pretty obvious once you get around where you started. So next, you want to single crochet in the next two stitches. So that would be the triple crochet and the first double triple crochet. So now you have four single crochets. One, two, three, four. And then in the top double triple crochet, which is the one in the middle, you're going to single crochet, chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, that makes a picot stitch. Okay, yarn, work with me. And then do another single crochet all in that one stitch. So you have two single crochet in the chain two space, one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then the top middle stitch you do a single crochet, a picot, and a single crochet. And then you're working back down the other side. You're going to do a single crochet in the next two stitches, and then two single crochet in the chain two space. And there's your first pointy petal. So now you're just going to continue that same cycle all the way around. So in the next chain two space, you'll put two single crochets. And then one single crochet in the next two stitches. In the middle stitch, you'll put a single crochet, a picot, and a single crochet. And to make the picot, you chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. This part's always a little tricky for me. <laughs> and then single crochet back into the same stitch. And then the next two stitches, you put one single crochet in, and then two single crochet in the chain two space. So there's two pointy petals. Now continue doing that same thing four more times. Okay, now when you get to the very last, you can slip stitch into the first single crochet to end it off. 
And here is your completed flower. Kind of floof it up a little. You do have two ends you need to weave in. You can leave a long tail if you would like to sew this onto something or even potentially, I thought it'd be cute to connect a bunch together. You can make a shawl or a decorative, decorative tablecloth or anything really. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to be using these to hand out at a Daffodil Festival I'll be going to soon. So I'm going to make these just as appliques that I will attach a pin to the back. So I'm going to weave in the ends. Alright, there's your completely finished daffodil flower. And there are a ton of different colorways you can go with. What I did is I looked up daffodils on Google and I found a photo that had a ton of different uh, color options of naturally occurring daffodils. And I saved that onto my phone so that while I was working on these I could pick different little color combinations so that I'd have a variety. <laughs> this is a super fun and quick pattern. I mean I just made it in real time. I might have sped it up a little bit. I don't know. I haven't edited it yet. <laughs> but it's super cute. And like I said, I'm going to a festival. And I'm going to attach like a safety pin on the back. So that I can hand them out to people. And they can pin them to their shirt or their purse or backpack. Or whatever they're carrying that day. And just to be a cute little token. But it can be used as an applique on hats. On scarves. On clothing. On blankets on just about anything or you could even attach some sort of stem and make little flowers out of them just to be actual flowers <laughs> but this is an awesome pattern so I will leave the link in the description box for the written form of this to the uh, original designers website and also their Ravelry so you can share your finished projects over there thanks for watching like this video if you liked it share it if you think someone else will subscribe if you're not and I'll see you in the next video bye guys